podcast is speeding. be good <clears throat> oh the irony let's is talk about thick it. on this one we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in just a second because i was i just couldn't believe what happened right couldn't before we did this even believe it yes ladies and gentlemen i'll explain in a minute i can't believe we're already back here again i know with another episode of i already told you that i have indeed yes i know and i'm gonna say that <laughs> I probably also told you a little bit too. You did. Melissa, uh-huh. with this one. Sure. Like today when we were driving in the car, <laughs> about an hour ago, Brian and I were in the car coming back from Bologna because we just saw Godspeed You Black, excuse me, Godspeed You Black Emperor. There you go. That's how you're supposed to say it. Yeah. Um, and they were great, fantastic. It was mm-hmm. his first time, my second time. Mm-hmm. First time I saw them was in 96. Wow. And so it just really, I was 21 years old and I am not now. Yeah. And they are not now. (laughs) I think they're relatively around my age, I would assume, when Mm. I saw them. They seem to Um, be middle-aged people. Yeah, it was just interesting, Um, Mm -hmm. but also fantastic, beautiful, great music. Yeah. We enjoyed it. And on the way home, (laughs) we were driving home and we were talking about music Mm -hmm. and I was talking about you know, places I've played musically. And we both lived in this city called Atlanta. And there was a club there called the Cotton Club that I once played with Beth Orton. I opened mm-hmm. up for her. Dropping names. I did. It was a big deal for me. It was like the biggest, <laughs> biggest deal. I love her. And it was her, it was her first tour. And I got to do that. And it made me super excited. Anyway. That's a big deal. And we were talking about it. And you were like, the Cotton Club. What did you say, Brian? Do you remember? I was like, oh, I've seen a couple of bands there. And there's this one... That, that like every single about. time I go there, I feel like, or every time, or when I saw this band in particular that we're going to be talking about today on this episode of I Already Told You That, I saw them at that club, Melissa. Hmm. But I could never, ever remember the funny, name of either of the bands. It wasn't that band that we're going to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, who are we talking about today? Well, I Wait, mean, first, before I say that, yeah. just in case you're new to this podcast, oh, yes. this is a podcast about music, mm-hmm. and it can be a little silly, and is a little, it's a super reminiscent um, and re um, and mm-hmm. we both love music in this house. Mm. Maybe one has a little bit better of a memory than the other <laughs> one, and um, every week I bring Brian, an artist mm-hmm. from his past that he has been exposed to, mm-hmm. but maybe just didn't stick, and this nope. one in particular... I have heard you say, I wrote this down on a sticky note so I didn't forget, so many times, Yeah. you will hear Galaxy 500 (laughs) and you will say, let's, you know, there's this, it's that, what's that? It's that you are in another band, but it's not that band. And you always guess, whatever (laughs) song is playing, like if it's Galaxy 500, you guess Luna. If it's Luna, you guess Galaxy 500 (laughs) every single time. And for those of Um. you who don't know, there was a band called... Oh, which we're already doing. I already did it. I already messed it up. You already messed, messed it up. up. Didn't even so give me a chance to guess about, it. So who are we talking about, Brian? I don't know. You still might not guess it. Right. I don't know. It could be Luna. <laughs> it could be Galaxy 500. They're kind of the same band. They're not, actually, which is what we're going to fix today for you. <laughs> That's the whole point of this episode. Well, as I've said in the past, I do like this band for sure. Who did um, you think it was, though? I didn't know. I mean, I assumed, did I you guess think it was Luna. I assumed that it was probably Galaxy 500 because you're... You you get your hackles up more about that one that I don't mm-hmm. know that one or I forget that one somehow that you get either of them confused yeah, I get my hackles right. up about yeah so I would say that I'm been more exposed to Luna but I knew that the the guy was from Galaxy 500 but again there is some similarities between the two well, that's... because that guy is singing the songs that guy. And, you know, he has kind of a Okay, voice. so we're going to get into this. The other part that's going to be different this episode than I usually do, oh. usually I just focus on one band. And we are going to talk about 
um, Galaxy 500 because okay. Galaxy 500 was the first band that the person you were talking about mm-hmm. is associated with both was in. Um, and then there was Luna later and some other things. And we're going to get into that. But the other part of this that's going to be fun later, Brian, and oh. I'm going to say it because just in case people don't want to listen to the whole episode, I'm going to tell a little surprise that's going to happen later. We're playing a game. What? Uh, come on now. We are. We're going to play a game. And that game is going to... My job right now is to help you understand the difference between these two bands <laughs> because they're very clearly, to me, is a difference and to a lot of people maybe that are listening to this. Um, and sorry for listening. Don't be offended. Um, it is for me to try to help him. Is that they're very different sonically. Okay. It's very different musically. Okay. And I, I promise you're going to know the difference. Okay. And so at the end, of the, like later in this podcast... I'm going to play songs. I'm only doing Galaxy 500 today, but at the end, I'm going to play some Luna and Galaxy 500 back to back. Oh my gosh. And we're going to see. This is nope. like a, te- like a test ta- taste test? Yes. Yes. And New I want to Coke see versus old Coke. If after being really, really exposed to the great work of Galaxy 500, <laughs> will you be able to tell? I don't know. And will you finally, I in our house, not know. say the wrong name of the band? Every well, I, I mean, you're assuming I'll remember the name of either one of those bands in the first but place. But you have Luna Records. I do. I have one. Yeah. I bought one. I think you have two. Do I have two? You have two. <laughs> 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 you have you have Penthouse and, and then you also have um, the first record. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know I had the Penthouse one. <laughs> hmm. No, I think you must have brought the other no, one. No, I have, I have another one in there, but it's not that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have Bewitched. But no Galaxy 500. Um, I didn't have it on that. I had it on cassette. Mm-hmm. I didn't have it on um, vinyl. Okay. And I've been in search for something for a long time, which we'll talk about. There's a box set that I'm obsessed with that they mm. have um, that I would really like to have. Mm. Anyway, so we'll not talk that, about it later. So not that dedicated of a fan, I guess, huh? Oh, you're just... Tr- <laughs> Someone's feeling backed into a corner, ladies and gentlemen. And when they do, they're trying to come after me. It's fine. I'll take it. Hardly. That's fine. All right. I am ready for my lesson. You ready? I'm ready to listen. I think also you said something in the car, and I'm just going to say it to you. like Something about a lazy boy. Yes. That when you hear this music, it Uh makes you want to sit in a chair and kind of like just like lays back. Have a morphine drip. Uh Uh-huh. And just... Because it is. It's very warm and fuzzy and comfortable music. And uh, I do remember when I saw them at the Cotton Club in Atlanta. um, You didn't see them. You saw Luna. I saw the Luna band. (laughs) And was like, this is good, but boy, I would love a, a chair right now to sit down on. You said that last night at God, Godspeed. I know. I know. Well, because, you know, you stand there, like, even before the band started playing, my feet were hurting. I need to get, like, orthopedic, um, uh, like, club shoes <laughs> so that I can go and stand for a ridiculous amount of time. And then, of course, you go to all the trouble to stand Find a good spot because we got up front so that we could see what was happening. That's light. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's light. That's light. And that's right. Um, And without fail, just like every time you've staked out your spot, some Yahoo comes up, you know, sidling their way through the crowd and stands directly in front of you. And I don't mind someone standing in front of me because you don't have, you know, um, ownership of it. What I don't like is nowadays that people don't have the sense to know to not have their camera up all the time. Oh boy. Like it's, it's right in my face. Like I have to see another small version of what I'm trying to see, but I can't see past their freaking cell phone. And I just, I just think that there should be some kind of like, just take your picture and put it away. Yeah. Don't keep it up the whole time. You don't need and the zooming 20 and the... minute long videos of yes. this band playing. You really don't. And not no. that it's not cool, but you're not in the moment. Anyway, so let's get into it. So do you know any of the? Do you know anything about <laughs> Galaxy Five Hundred? It's okay the guy that was in it had another band called Luna. His name is Dean Warham. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Warham. That one. It's W A R. H A M. H A M. So I say Warham. Warham. Sounds good. Yeah, Warham or Warham. Warhammer. Um, and then he was the vocalist and guitar mm-hmm. player. Mm-hmm. The bassist, her name is Naomi Yang, <clears throat> and then the drummer is Damian Krukowski. So a three piece. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she sings sometimes too. Um, they met. Do you know where they met? Everyone always talks no about clue. This. I'm going to guess like Minneapolis or like are they, are they a Midwest upper Midwest band? They were attending Harvard. It, oh, which, okay. I think you should remember we we've been to Harvard <laughs> once. Mm-hmm. We didn't go there. We just walked through it. Never went there. No. Well, we went there by like. That's right. Going there. That's true. And I think we looked at the cafeteria in the oh my library. God, we did. We weren't supposed to either. They were pissed. 
<laughs> we had to sneak in there. It was a little silly. Um, so they met. They started playing music. I'm not going to get too into the to, to details about that because I don't really know. Okay. But what I do know is um, the next part, which is very important to me and important to a lot of people who like this particular producer in mm. person, they sent a demo to Kramer, um, who was at Shimmy Disc. And if you don't remember, Brian, I'll help you remember. He was in Bong Water, this band I've talked about before that I really love with Ann Magnuson, mm-hmm. which is fantastic, which will be talked about sooner or later okay. on this podcast because they're fantastic. But he produced Low. Oh. Yeah, so when Low also sent their, their demo to him, he produced it. And he's responsible for a lot of good things happening. And he's going to produce every record we're going to talk about today. His name is Kramer. Kramer. That's one, his last name. One yeah. name. Yeah. His first name is, what's his first name? I can't remember. I'll put it here. John. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, so they produced it and he put out their first single. And the first single, Brian, we're going to listen to right now. Okay. And if you're new to this podcast, I also want to say that I make a playlist for um to go along with this right. we're just going to play little sections of it to familiarize him and hopefully make it stick but if you would like to listen to the whole song mm-hmm. please do so um, we actively we'll have encourage you to do that yes it's under i already told you that yep. you can find it on youtube music which is always better because they have more of the rare stuff mm. and um spotify yep. but also when you're done doing that go buy a record Yeah, go buy a record okay so this song brian was their first single and it's called tugboat Now, this one, I know uh-huh. in a big way uh-huh. uh, because um, guest of the show, friend of the show, Mr. Andy Runkle, mm-hmm. um, also loved this song and he liked to play this song a lot. So He and I almost did this band. I have accompanied him while he's playing and singing this mm-hmm. song. It no, fits him well. When he and I did it, Laurie Anderson, the Laurie Anderson episode yes. together. This was our other This was one. on the mm-hmm, list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is a favorite of his. Yes. For sure. It's a favorite of mine as well. It's great. You should listen to the whole thing because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this Galaxy 500 band, like all of their songs start off at like molasses speed, but then eventually <laughs> get up speed to... Up. <laughs> <laughs> slightly That's more head bopping <laughs> i happen to really like music that isn't super fast <gasps> me too i it's i kid I you know. know i kid i know you Melissa. do i know you, you know do. i kid about this but no i like that song very much let's listen to a little bit more of it brian let's do it guitar i know i'm saying i do particularly like his guitar sound is mm-hmm. is quite nice and that's the real mellow part right that's the part where you want to just chill mm-hmm. and listen to that well, guitar i always playing. like not that they're psychedelic but people have said that about mm-hmm. them like it just feels very they definitely have a velvet underground kind of thing dreamy going on. very dreamy. well dream pop they were they're like one of the first uh, bands to be called that that's kind of where that came from see there you go which became later but also there are contemporaries at that time like mazzy star too as well right dream pop yeah yeah that makes sense which i warm, was warm fuzzy music that was part of the i think the reason i can't remember if i started listening to mazzy star first or galaxy 500 because hmm. i got she hangs brightly and i think that came out in 89 or 90 and okay this so that was the first single i'm yes. digressing i'll, I'll get what, into the mazzy star thing this? in a minute is this, this was just the first single. So the that one, I think, came out in 88, right before this record. And the, so they have three albums. This first record is called Today, and it came out in 1988. Weird. And that song is going to be on it. And this other song I'm about to play you now, Brian, okay. is also going to be on it. It's called Pictures.
there on that one how much <laughs> Paul Westerberg and him can kind of sound um, yeah. 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 Which yeah, is someone much. you do love. Very, very much. much. And I will say, going back to the other song, maybe they don't speed it up, but maybe I sped it up when I played it. <laughs> you always do. <laughs> you do that every time oh, I play with you. Oh, gosh. You're a speeder upper. Yeah. Because songs are meant to be played fast. That's what's funny is I play slow music <laughs> with my husband, and he's always trying to speed well, it up. it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. But when I do... One of these days. You're way we'll too get fast. back to it. That's a great song. I definitely love the harmonies. I, I wonder... So this, I imagine, the woman who's playing in the band, you said there was a woman Naomi. playing bass. Yeah. So she's probably singing the other part? Yeah. Or do you think it's him... That's him. ...doing both parts? That's him on that song, yes. Wow. Because there's the lower... Like male voice, but mm-hmm. then there was a very high. I don't think that was um, the drummer. I think that was him. Hmm. But Naomi's playing drums. No, she's playing bass. Oh, well, who's the drummer? Damien. What he sings? We're, there was two I voices know, Brian, in there. There's a recording. So they do this thing, okay? They take a microphone, they t- hit a tape, <laughs> and they hit play, right? And then someone sings, and then they go, "Let's do that again oh, on another track." Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. explaining she's already <laughs> told me that explaining I know. me i know no we... my question was yeah. is the woman playing bass singing the other part no that's a that's a man singing but i do think you can hear i was, was hoping with that one in particular you would hear the vocalization that would make you maybe be more of a fan of the way he sings i definitely good. like the way he good. sings for sure good good <laughs> <laughs> also the thing about galaxy <clears throat> of Thunder that i think is very different than luna is it's not that Luna isn't chill, but I think Galaxy of 100 is way more chill. It's And way chill. more atmospheric and way more moody than Luna is. Mm-hmm. Okay. In my opinion. All right. I like both bands very much, but that's kind of how I always know the difference between mm-hmm. the two. Is that it sounds more sparse. It sounds more, you know, more kind of, I don't want to use the word droning because I don't mean that in a negative mm-hmm. way. I just mean it feels like more kind of, you know, I mean droney in like a... Kind of psychedelic. In the best sense, sense of drone. Yes, yes. And like I like that kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's great. But let's listen to another song. This one is called Parking Lot. Shuffly beat there. I thought you'd like that one. I do for the shuffle, and then never heard that song in my life. Good. Well, did you listen to much of this first one? I don't know if you've heard. I've never listened to Galaxy Five Hundred at all on on purpose. (laughs) 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 Like you pointed out, I have those Luna records, which Mm -hmm. I do like, Mm -hmm. but no, I don't. I didn't ever have any Galaxy Five Hundred stuff. Yes, I think Tugboat was the first one that I heard from aforementioned Doctor Runkle. Yes, and that makes sense because you all covered it. Let's mm-hmm. go a little bit further into parking lot. Let's. Hiding in the parking lot and watching all the people fall in the sands. Yeah, love it. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. Mm-hmm. And I like his guitar noodlings there. Sound good. Mm-hmm. It's got lots of nice reverb going on. Mm-hmm. The drummer's getting some tom-tom work going on. I like it. It's part of the tom-tom club. Yep. <laughs> what else you got for us? Okay. How about temperatures rising? How what about it? What were you This is still say? on tomorrow You're or still today? on today. Well, they made it. Before. It's not like today they did it. No. This was 1988. Yes, it was yesterday. Interesting that they would do that to us. 
Which one is this? Temperatures rising. Let's have it. I can't do this now. it's also something that we've talked about many other times mm-hmm. on this podcast is I like when bands slowly build up and kind of have a climatic kind of thing. And that's pretty much the definition of what galaxy 500 does over yep. and over again on songs. And I can do that all day long and never get tired of hearing that. It just makes me happy. So a lot of there's not, this one's not that long, but a lot of them can get kind of long where they, it just builds up they, to this they great jam out crescendo for a bit. of joy. I definitely like the bass sound in mm-hmm. that one where they're mm-hmm. kind of playing that high register. Cheers. That bass like, we do, 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 do. I like that. This is going to be the last one I'm going to play off of today. Okay. And this song um, was released before the record, but I'm going to play the album version. Okay. And it was released on right after Tugboat as a flexi disc. Do you remember what those are? Yeah. Yeah. They used to like come in magazines. Yeah, because it was like easy. So I, I read some things about this on Wikipedia hmm. and I was going to share it with you, Brian. Please do. It was a very thin vinyl sheet and it was mostly in magazines that they would release it that way. Um, and it was con- commercially introduced in 1962. And every year between 1963 and 69, the Beatles made a special Christmas recording on FlexiDisc. Weird. And they sent it to their fan club. And at first, it was just like holiday greetings and being like, hello, have a Merry Christmas, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> and then they were like, you know, around 67, they started using that to be like their more experimental stuff. They would huh. be like, hey, let's try this out on this. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's, that was a way that they could explore more weird stuff. So cool. I thought that was kind of cool. So why was it, was this put out for that reason, to be more promotional? No, no maybe but people put flexi discs out in the 80s. I, I had seen for them before. For sale? Especially like in NME and different magazines and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if it was for sale. It's it like a giveaway situation. It didn't say how it was released, like as far as like if, if it was in a magazine or if it cost money. It just said it came out on flexi disc. Huh, cool. And I think that the, I alluded to, but I'll talk about very briefly, is there is, um, there's three albums and then there's a box set and then the box set, there's a one of the records in it or the CD, depending on what version you have is, um, I think it's just CDs though. If I remember, I've never seen it on vinyl, Hmm. um, is rarities and it has the, this version, the real version that was on the flexi disc recording, but I'm not playing that one. I'm playing the obvious. These me. The Oblivious is the name. The song is called Oblivious. Uh huh. And I'm being oblivious right now. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Let's listen to that. Harmonica being mm-hmm. introduced. Are you a, a harmonica fan? Of course. I don't know that I am. Really? Yeah. I think I, I even tried to play one once, but I just, I don't mind it on this song. I'm not criticizing the song. I'm just saying in general. Well. I could do without a harmonica. As you all learned when you listened to the Neil Young episode, mm-hmm. Neil's particular penchant for the harmonica, it can be a... Um, you know, really drag up those kind of emotional, Mm -hmm. deep, um, you know, moody kind of vibes. Yeah. Or it can be happy like that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's listen to a little bit more of Oblivious. Go 
got out the super reverb for that one. Uh-huh. And I, I failed to mention that that first record was put out on a small label called Aurora. But mm. this next record, which is my favorite and quite a few other people's favorites out of the three, okay. um, is called On Fire. And it came out in 1989, and it came out on Rough Trade. Oh. Which... Bigger I'm, deal. I'm a big fan of. Um, and it was right still there. produced by Kramer again. Um, but it's a great, great record. And what I was saying earlier is Mazzy Stark came out with um, She Hangs Brightly, which mm-hmm. was their first al- album, 1990. Okay. Um, and I think they might have also been on Rough Trade. I think, yeah, they were label mates. And I definitely, that's how those two, I can't remember which came first, the chicken or the egg, but it was one of those two things right. that made me listen to the other. And they're very complimentary yes. for one another, yes. for sure. Different sounding bands, for sure, but it was like definitely in the vein I was in at the time. Sure. And I always regretted that I didn't listen to Galaxy 500 earlier, but I probably, yeah, I didn't start listening to them probably until like 93, something like that. No, hmm. no, it was 90 because that's when Shang's right, like 91, something like that. The magic year, yeah. 1991. It did feel that way. No, oh, excuse Easy. me. Let's listen to a little bit of On Fire. This song is called Blue Thunder. feel that like it still sounds similar to the first record mm-hmm. but there's just a little bit difference and you're going to get more of that the more we listen to it yeah i just think it got more there's more synthesized. to it yes yeah. yes for sure and i'm better like mastering that. probably melissa are you criticizing <laughs> the first mastering whoa let's listen to a little bit more of blue thunder That's nice. It is nice. This is my first heart of the podcast. What? Yes. Are we ready for it? Oh my gosh. Let's do it. It's called Snowstorm. Now, why is this one a heart for you, Melissa? It puts me in a place. I just like it. You like snowstorms. It's not that. It just puts me like, it probably is just, it's, you know, when we do this, it's a lot of nostalgia. Uh-huh. And I I remember laying around listening to that song. It brings you joy. Brings me joy. Nice. Or sadness. How did you, <laughs> do we, did we uh, figure that out? Like how you started, I know you were saying you listened to Mazzy Star and you felt like those, one led to the other. But I'm always curious. Again, this is just a find for you in the stacks. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was because of that box set that I was talking about. Because I see. It was being record stores and it was weird looking. Okay. Um, and uh, what was the box set of? It wasn't just, it was their, Galaxy actually, 500. It wasn't then, but it was later. It was th- there are three albums and then uh-huh. one rarity um, album. And I think I had listened to the, the first thing I listened to pretty intensely was that rarity album. Okay. To be honest. Um, but I can't remember. I think I have it written down someplace where that came out. And when I get to that part of my notes, let me see. Maybe I have it here. But I mean, is it your time in the record store that exposed you to this particular thing? Not when I was working at one, but just going into one, yeah. I see. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And also you'd hear it. you hear people talking about them. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, come through. College radio played it for darn sure. Yeah, this is. I very definitely heard Tugboat on Fourth of July on college yeah, radio. So college radio that music. Happened. WKXR. And I definitely listened to them before I listened to Luna. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. They were around before Luna, yeah. Yeah, but you know, doesn't mean you do it that you way. Know, Luna was already a band by the time they. Yes. Yeah, got yeah, it. Definitely. All Most right. Definitely. Okay, Very let's go good. further into it. This one is called. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> Nothing. You're doing great. I don't know. You got a sunny day behind you. I know. And I'm There's inside. All kinds of things. Talking about Galaxy 500. <laughs> Should be outside. But I, did we ever talk about that? The name of the band? Um, I think it's the car. It's a car. Yeah. yeah. I Galaxy 500 is a car. It is. You kind of had one similar to it when I met you. I did. You didn't have a Galaxy though. No, I didn't. You had the... You Mercury Comet. Mercury Comet. Mm-hmm. They all had those like space names at that time, didn't they? They did. I like Comet. Yeah, Comet's pretty cool because yeah. they're fast and they're on fire. Mm-hmm. And it was the Caliente. Ooh, right. hot. Yeah, because oh it was, gosh, a was a hot Comet. Fast engine. It really was. Mm-hmm. But the brakes, not so good. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go fast, <laughs> don't. but you're certainly not going to stop. <laughs> no. So you don't really want to do that. Give yourself lots of space. Let's listen to a little more Galaxy 500. <laughs> Let's. Um, this song is called When Will You Come Home? Is there any way to post do that? No. <laughs> yeah, I okay, can okay, post okay. it. <laughs> oh my gosh. You were someplace else there for a minute. I lost you. <laughs> you got lost in Galaxy 500. I was into it. Yeah, yeah, I was totally into it. The cat wandered across my vision. I think and you just I liked got watching sucked her. Sucked away. I'm sure a lot of you out there have cats. And the funny thing about cats is sometimes they can open doors and it looks really weird when they do it. And I think that's why you were like, because they just kind of reach out with their little paw and they make like a big gigantic door open and it's just weird you know they can't do anything else no you know but but they can open a door you know so i mean she can at least when she's on this side of it the other side wouldn't work out so much in her no uh -uh. if it was latched i want to go up a little bit more on this song okay because you couldn't let it go a minute ago so let's listen to a bit more of it when will you come home getting some mm. more of this song did you enjoy that i did it's good i love that song it gets into it because the thing is there's there's plenty of guitar riffs going on in this yeah listen, that, you gotta listen to the whole thing i've yeah. that's the only thing is i'm a little bit sad that we didn't do this yesterday so that on our road trip we could listen to tons oh, of guys oh dang i know that's all right you can listen to it for the rest of the sunny day <laughs> yes it's a nice and speaking of days this song is called another day a different voice i did notice that melissa that that was not 
the regular lead it's singer guy. It's not Dean singing. It's, it's Naomi. Not Dean. Now that was my question earlier. Is it would she have potentially been singing backups? Okay. No. So this is the first time she's emerging as a song I'm singer. I'm not saying this is the first time she's ever emerged as a song singer. Just on that song. I see. Um, let's listen to a little bit more of her song singing. Okay. On another day. does definitely feel familiar to me about i don't know if it's more of like the velvet underground again that i'm hearing yeah right um but this next part i especially like and you know i don't usually go up three times but if i do there's a reason there's a reason so let's listen to a little bit more of another day Conventional guitar solo. Speaking of the Beatles, they're doing a little backwards Ta-da. guitar solo Beatles action mm. there. You think it's backwards? That's what it sounded like to me. Mm. That'd be my guess if I was going to make one. That's okay. And uh, <laughs> no, no, actually, no, you, I just realized something too. This next uh-huh. song I'm going to play. Okay. I think this might be the first song that I heard by Galaxy 500. Oh. Because it is a cover of them doing a Joy Division song. Okay. And it was the last song that Joy Division did. Um, and then this is the first song that New Order recorded. So it's oh, Ceremony, right. which is my favorite of those two bands. So let's listen to it. I have many hearts next to it. Wow. Many. Like More three. than, oh. Ready? Yeah. This is a cover of Ceremony. back up of course on that song i'm gonna make a little further definitely in. giving it the galaxy 500 but that's treatment what the thing is it's such a perfect song for them to cover mm. you know they also cover um uh, george harrison isn't it a pity as well i think you might oh have heard them yeah, do yeah, that. yeah yeah that's um, so good uh but this i think both those covers are really great but mm-hmm. this one in particular you enjoy i do because it just makes so much sense with their them musically mm-hmm. but it's not like still their own thing. It sounds yeah, like them being it. themselves. Yeah, totally. But they didn't have to go very far out of themselves to nope. be. In They're it. able to make that sound happen. That's a smart cover. <laughs> Let's hear a little bit more of ceremony. <laughs> the warm and fuzzies right there Brian. Yeah, that's good all stuff. over warm and fuzzies is there, is there any cover out there that makes you particularly happy wow that you can think of that was just like you're like that's a great cover mm, nope oh, okay. <laughs> you just can't think of it or like you want to be put on the spot that's both okay <laughs> okay that's fine you can just think about it and maybe come back one of these days well, it might come to me i'm okay. like oh that one yeah because sometimes p- half the problem is you have to know that a cover is a cover. <laughs> yes. It's you do. part as half the battle, yeah, Melissa. Yeah. So if you don't, then you're like, oh, that's a cool song they played. Wait a second. 
Wait a minute. They have those mixes, you know, when you listen to certain streaming services, they'll have the like, I bet you didn't know kind of lists mm -hmm. where they play the originals. Yes. You Remember know, once we did fun. a I probably already talked about this once on this podcast. <clears throat> if I did, I digress. But mm. we did a trivia night once where one of the categories, and it was a strong one for me, was um, covers, covers. And you had to mention, like, you had to know, you had to list, you list as many covers as you could list, uh -huh. but you had to write who covered who and who was the original artist. Dang. And I had fun. That takes skills. I think I won that round. I have sure just you that did. one. Everything else, not so much. You I already told you that all over the that list. <laughs> it was silly, but it was fun. <laughs> um, and I wanted to mention too. I I, I mentioned earlier already that mm. there's a mix that goes along with this, but I'm not playing every song that's on the mix. I'm okay. be here all day long. Oh, I see. So there's more songs on there, and Great. you should listen to them. <laughs> and now we're on the final record. Okay. Before we get to our game show that's right quiz that's coming show up. hopefully speaking i think of by now trivia, you've heard, i know you're not hearing luna but you know what they sound like so I hopefully I you'll do. be able to remember the difference once you're faced with it. i think it'll be pretty <laughs> evident to you after listening to both i was gonna do both fans i was like I that will be so. insane and plus you know who luna is i'm not gonna get into that with you but maybe now you know the difference um, this last record of theirs is called This Is Our Music, and it came out in 1990, and it's also mm. on Rough Trade, and it's also produced by Kramer. Okay. Again, uh, the first song was the one we already listened to at the beginning of the podcast, but we're going to listen to a little bit more of it because it's one of my favorites, Fourth of July. fade that was a quick fade fast fade you gave me the quick finger so i had to do the I, fast no, fade I, 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 I think it's because one fade got missed so oh, now it's fast fade oh i see let's listen to a bit more fourth of july mm. i wrote a poem on a dark biscuit and your dog refused to look at it so i got drunk and looked at the empire state building it was no bigger than a nickel That. I love that song so much. He said, I wrote a poem on a dog biscuit, mm -hmm. but the dog wouldn't read it, I think. Yeah. Something the dog like, wouldn't eat it. The dog wouldn't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs can't read poems. No. You don't know it, but and you it think they would eat a dog biscuit. To fit on the dog biscuit. Oh my God, so small. And you know, it's funny, Brian. I think if I were to go into your CDs right now, you have this record. I might. CDs. That's also I very fun well might. Very funny to me. Because usually what would happen is I would hear something or learn about something and then go and look at used CDs somewhere. And if I saw one, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know this. Mm -hmm. And if it was, you know, cheap, I would I would buy it. Nice. And then yeah, probably that. listen to it. You know, the problem is we don't have really any way of listening to CDs anymore I in know. this house. We could take them into the car. We just don't have ways of listening anymore. No. No, it's all these goofy streaming things, but but we should thank goodness that's for not them. True. We we don't always just listen. To oh, I know, I know, but it's nice having them because you can hear all kinds of stuff, especially stuff that's out of print. For sure, but still buy things. Oh yeah, from their source. Oh, my goodness, yes. Let's listen to another song. This song is called "Summertime." Start. So this is one of your classic uh, Galaxy 500 six minutes. So oh. I'm going to go about 220 in and see what's going on. Okay. Because I think we should find out what they're building up to. Go into the
on there. A lot yes. more going on. A couple different guitars. Mm-hmm. Guitar leads. Beautiful. Big build up. I love it. Yeah. Let's go to the movies. So you feel like you're getting a sense because we're For only sure. going to play a few more songs, Brian, before our game show begins. Okay. I'm prepared. I think well, I'm maybe not. Prepared. Maybe you're getting there. You're getting there. This next song is a cover. What? Another cover. Hmm. It's a Yoko Ono cover, and it's called Listen, to the, Listen, the Snow is Falling, and it's Naomi singing again. Hmm. Think you might have. <laughs> they went I mean, into a first grade like, classroom we need snow somewhere to fall. <laughs> and found a rain stick. You could use a rain stick. Uh, but this song builds up beautifully, and it's it's about an eight minute song. Goodness. Um, and it is. I always say this. Do you understand when I say that? I'm always saying that just for reference because we're not playing the whole song. It's not right. because I think there's anything wrong with an eight-minute song. But it's remarkable sometimes when a band plays an eight-minute long song. Well, Godspeed, Your Black Emperor has 22-minute long songs. That's true. So, you know. That's true. It's okay. It can yeah, happen. It can happen. People can have an attention span. They can. Let's listen to a little bit for, for, <laughs> forward and listen to The Snow is Falling. <laughs> Satisfying. Yeah. Satisfying climax. Yeah. I enjoy. I'm guessing that was going to go into the chorus again or something. Another You'll super get, build up. It's going to be so fun for you when you finally get to listen yeah, to the whole I song. I finally get to listen to it. It really will be. This song, Brian, is called The King. So he's not the, but King of Spain too. Hmm. There was a first King of Spain and then there was and the second King of Spain. So, oh, oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Sounds like there was some woodblock work oh. going on there. Do you like often that. call it woodblock work? When or do you just call it woodblock. When you're getting in there and you're, you know, you're working out some sounds, you gotta, you gotta do some woodblock work because it's not just. <laughs> Can you say that be really fast five wood times. Woodblock work. It's not just gonna be, you know, your your one strike. You want to get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you gotta get it just right. A little syncopation. Yeah. Thank you. This one's a little bit further into King of Spain Part 2. I know it's a little slow, but it's really beautiful. Yeah. And I just wanted to listen to it. And also, I think it'll help you with your next challenge soon. So <laughs> it should be okay. helping you. Last song from this record that we're going to play. Uh-huh. Last one. 
This song is called Here She Comes Now. classic in my opinion yep um but we're gonna go back up on it one last time and here she comes now So what, um, <clears throat> you know, you go through the process of putting this together for us, uh, yeah. you know, when we get to listen to this. What goes through your mind or what's, what, how do you decide which songs we're going to listen to, Melissa? <laughs> do you, this sounds like a question within a question. <laughs> no, I'm just, just curious. Well, because why I would choose certain things. No, because you um, put together a mix, and yes. the mix is a little easier to decide because it can be longer, mm-hmm. right? So you could put more it's songs not on terribly there. Terribly longer, though. But in this, you're just trying to give a little sampling because mm-hmm. part of this, you know, another reason why I think we we got to doing this was um, the fact that other people can help influence you. Mm-hmm. in what you're listening to you know and a yeah. lot of times because that's always my question to you is well how did you figure this out melissa because the person like you would just pick something up in a record store and and go for it a person like me would would worry about that decision thinking i was always getting the wrong thing and so i'd want somebody else to say oh this is probably the one you should get and then I would well, follow those be, advice. But they could be just as wrong as your random selection. It's true. Or if you're at their house and they have it and you listen to it and you're like, oh, that's good. I want to listen to that. Or they make a mix for you. Mixes are the good yeah, thing. Yeah, right. I think that's a so good I'm one. just I'm just curious, like what would get you to pick one song over the other? Honestly, I listen to all these things all over again. Mm-hmm. And I remember the things that I really liked. And mm-hmm. that's usually mm-hmm. what ends up happening. The and ones I want to show like to the top a for you. span of things. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to have it be all one way or the other. That usually happens too. Right. I did find my sticky note to talk about the box set that I keep talking about. Okay, there it is. In 1991, Rough Trade went bankrupt. Oh. um, As a label. And Krakowski and Yang purchased the Masters at an auction to their records. And they reissued it on Ryko Disc in 1996 Ah. as the box set I Desire that has. The three albums and the rarity. Okay. And it, when I saw it, it was just, um, it was CDs. I've never seen it as a vinyl set. Right. I can look that up, but I don't think it's done vinyl. Because that was Which mid-90s. is too bad because now I don't want it because I don't want a you CD box You don't want a bunch of plastic. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather have it if it's vinyl. Although I think you can get the rarities on its own. Mm. And I wouldn't mind that. Mm. But that would Noted. definitely be, I probably had heard them, but probably more seriously listening to Gogs 500 would be right before that so okay. 94 all right probably when i saw that box it then it became some kind of magical thing probably. yeah Ryko just did a lot of that stuff i love that's how i heard big star yeah. um because i mean i'd heard i knew that they were covered because i like read every li- linear liner note <laughs> um liner note in, Lin- you read it linearly uh, in, like from the like, left as to i've the already right. mentioned when this yeah. mortal coil put out their like covers i was like who's big star and that's how i figured out who they were and yeah. then Ryko disc re-released uh re-released a uh, uh, sisters, lovers, and nice. I was like, oh, and I bought all that stuff. Ryko Disc was great for yeah. the reissues back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many good things they put out, and then like now they don't exist. But I well, because everybody has streaming services, so why would see? You that's the bummer. Re-issue. That's the bummer. It was like a big deal to be like, we're gonna actually put this back up. Although I, people still want it, like that's on true. vinyl, that's they'll true. do it. Things you are know, hard people to find. Still, yeah. in CDs in Italy, we see ones all the time. We're like, is this really the price? Yes, that is because <laughs> it's rare and it's being imported. Uh-huh. Okay. Is it time? Are you ready to play for the it? game? Ben, up, is up, it up, Galaxy Five Hundred or Luna? I am. We have our contestant so Brian ready. Morrissey. 
He's heard no Luna during this podcast, so he's very prepared. But he has heard a hell of a lot of Galaxy 500, and so have you. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay. This is exciting. I was I thought you would like it. I was like, this is so silly. I kept trying to figure out how I was going to do this, and I was like, just I think you should just do it this way. You did it. You thought of the so, best way. Are you ready? I am. This song, Brian, I'll tell you the names of songs, but okay. I'm not going to tell you who it is. So you're going to play the song, uh-huh. and then I have to guess, no, I'm gonna is it I'm going to play two Luna? songs. I'm going to play two songs. I wouldn't guess until you hear both songs. That's probably Wait the Wait a minute. Idea. What? So then how do I guess? Now I'm confused. It's, so listen to me. Okay. <laughs> it's a head-to-head battle. Okay. So maybe I didn't explain this properly. Yeah, maybe you need to explain I it. am going to play <clears throat> two songs, Okay. A short section of it. Yep. You're going to hear, I'm going to say, this is number one. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to say, this is number two. Uh-huh. And then you're going to tell me which one's Galaxy 500. The okay. other one is Luna. <laughs> or you can guess Luna if you were more strongly knowing that one is Luna. You can use your powers. Okay. But you have to, one of the, obviously, if you say, like, it's Luna, then the other one's Galaxy 500. Okay. You know, I'm not tricking you. They're not ever going to be both Galaxy 500 or both <laughs> Luna. Okay. So that's how it's working. But I you need it. to hear both to be able to compare, I think, for you. All right. Where I might not need that comparison, but you might be the comparison. That sounds like a snide. <laughs> I just thought say. I was going to listen to one song and you were going to say, is that Luna or Galaxy 500? No, and I think I a head to head is better. Okay. In my opinion. All right. Because like, I think it's more fun. Like I, I pick these songs specifically. Okay. To go together. Because they go to, okay, gotcha. To see if you can tell the difference. All right. This song, I now understand the rules. Okay, let's try. Are you following along, everyone? Hopefully. <laughs> Get, this is number buzzers one. Buzzer's ready. In our first head-to-head battle. This song is called Cheese and Onions. I guess I can't always say the names of songs, actually, because some of them might be giveaway. But that's not this one. This one I'm safe to say. That was the Beatles. That was cheese and onions. Yes. And this one is called Slash Your Tires. No point in screaming because I'm only dreaming that you came to pieces and I came in peace. You're always loaded. You may. <laughs> I think I made it easy for you. You made it easy for me. Uh, all right. So Number cheese one. and onions is Galaxy Five Hundred, <laughs> which would mean slash your tires was Luna. I think that. So how did you tell the difference between those two, Brian? <laughs> head to head. I think it, even though you didn't listen to Luna this episode, you know what they sound like. I think it's now becoming clear. Right? Okay. Right? Okay. Don't you Do think? I get one more? You're, we have three more. Okay. We're doing three more of these. Okay. But does that make it more clear for you, I think? It does. Uh, it's getting clear. It's getting Still clear. a little fog okay. out there. This next two, I can't say. Then I'm going to say... Don't say... Just say song number one, song number I'm two. I'm going to do that because on this one, I will give you a hint that you've already heard one of these songs today. <laughs> I did this on purpose. <laughs> Too easy. Okay. Song Here number one. the first one. Got it. Okay. Got some shaker in there. <laughs> some good drum work. Uh-huh. I'm ready for number two. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I know that because that's the part I would always speed up <laughs> when I'd play it. Yeah. Uh, so number one, of course, is Luna. Uh-huh. And number two is Galaxy 500 I see you tugboat. relaxing because when I first said we, we were doing this thing in the podcast, I saw your whole body just be like... And understand, we both work in education right now, um, one of us temporarily. Um, And I am learning some things, which is, you know, we'll show something. No, no, show something and then put it into application. This is kind of what we're doing, Brian. I learned this from... Some assessment. Yeah, I learned this. This is my my assessment. Some direct teaching. And now, yes, now this this. is the the formative assessment. I'm not a teacher. But yeah, (laughs) (laughs) anyway, um, which is obvious. You can't look at what I'm doing because then you might figure things out. I'm not looking at anything. Don't look over anything. You're just pushing Um, the buttons. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything. Okay. This is our third match. So are you going to make this harder now? We're going to see. Let's do it. Number one? Number one. one i do like that song mm-hmm. very much uh, probably on one of the cds that i have in the house mm, since I, I know that one i would hope so i, I didn't try <laughs> to make it hard for you i really didn't i was trying to make you be able to do it this is number two Brian. You're putting them in the same order. The first one was Luna, and the second one was Galaxy 500. Well, if you keep going back and forth, it'll be real obvious. <laughs> so, yeah. And I did pick a record you own, so I was hoping <laughs> some ding, ding, ding would be happening. Uh. So, so far, we know that the, the both bands have the same singer, uh-huh. so he sounds a little bit similar. But <laughs> Luna... You know, I think there's well, more want, people in the band. I want your analysis band. at the very end. Okay. Like, so I want you it. to tell me how you cracked it, if you crack it. We'll All see. Right. This is the last. <clears throat> see if I so can get got, it. So you've got, you know, what would this be then, Brian? I'm, I'm the best th- out of I'm, four. I'm three for four now. Okay. Yes. Let's do it. I was like somewhat sweating it for a second there. Uh, the first one was Galaxy Five Hundred. Okay. And the second one was Luna. So See, did you did you not believe that you could get through that one hundred percent? I didn't. And you I didn't did think it. I could. I didn't I guess, want to set you up for failure. That was not my thank intention. Thank you. Thank you. And, I'm and not that and kind it, of person. It took the side by side comparison, see? Melissa. So see, it was a good teaching strategy on your part. So now, when you, but what will you notice that's different about the two? Because they are very different bands. Yeah, very different. Yes. Am I going to go as far as saying very different? I would say very different. <laughs> I think they're still in the both in the kind of slow dream pop, fuzzy sound genre. I don't feel like but that's what Luna is. Luna definitely has more instrumentation, more um, 
I think, a wider range of sounds happening as opposed to Galaxy 500, which is pretty well, much that There's a that lot of trio. sounds going on in five, Galaxy 500, too. There might just be different ones. Than but he pretty much sound. kept the same guitar sound, mm -hmm. yeah. and the bass sounded the same, and the drums. Well, I think Luna, um, too, he has different producers happening instead of just right. one. Okay. And there's probably more of a rotating cast in his band, maybe? Because mm -hmm. Luna kind of seemed like it was just him. You no, know? it's a band. I know it's a band, but it's like pretty much like he does all the stuff. Well, we're not talking about Luna today. That's true. <laughs> we were just making sure but that you knew. The for those people between. who've enjoyed what they've heard with Galaxy 500, they should definitely. They should I'm, definitely I'm actually check gonna. Out Luna. I'm gonna mention that's not just Luna. You should definitely check out Damien and Naomi. They okay. have their own band that uh, exists, and also in 1989. They made an independent book publishing uh, company called, it's called Exact Change, and it publishes um, avant-garde 19th, 19th and 20th century literature. Goodness. Yes, and it's still in existence. Well, they did go to Harvard after all. Yes, and he I think he also <laughs> writes. Um, but they do have a band that they did themselves. They're married. They're a couple. Okay. I don't know if they're married, but they've been a couple forever. I see. Um, and then Dean, uh, he went solo first for a while, and then um, he did Luna. And then him and his wife also had a band, and she was the bass player in Luna. Okay. Um, and it's called Dean and Britta. Oh. Uh -huh. So you, you got Damien I know. and... I know. Naomi. And so and Galaxy Dean. Thunder broke up. Like I think though by the last record they kind of had a they weren't doing so great. I and see. they went their separate ways and did different things. And all those things are also great. And you should check them out. For sure. For sure. For and sure. Enjoy For all sure. Of it. So I do think this one worked. And it was really <laughs> silly. Like I've been like this has been on my list to do it this way the uh -huh. whole time. And I'm like, how are you gonna do that? So I hope you were entertained and had fun with it, Brian. I, and I 100%. hope you playing along also had success. In the head-to-head, -head, is it Galaxy 500? Is it Luna? <laughs> Excellent work, as always, Melissa, mm -hmm. bringing us the best of a particular band. In this case, Galaxy 500, but with bonus introduction bonus of Luna. Songs too. That was yeah. good stuff. Um, fantastic. So, as always, everybody, please check out the the mixes so you can hear the full links of all these songs. And buy their records. Yeah, go out and buy a record and support your record shop. Um, all the time, always. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you, Melissa. Good times. <laughs> Thank you. You don't believe me? No, no, I do. I do believe you. You're still, you're still I don't standing. I if you believe me. I do believe you. Okay. I do. Well, I've uh, increased also, my knowledge. I wanted to say, I haven't said this in a while, but we, we've had a lot of new listeners, which is great. But you can follow us on the, in the, you know, the social medias, we have platforms all over all those things. Just look for I Already Told You That. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I barely tweet, but we're there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can also email us at I Already Told You That at gmail.com, which I haven't said that in a while. So there you go. Yeah. And, you know, and if be you're nice. really feeling motivated, you could leave a review. That'd be nice. What are we going to go out on, Melissa? I want to hear more of Cheese and Onions, which is on oh. the Rarity album that oh, I was nice. talking about. I'm a big fan of well, it. Well, it's a so great title. So we're going to listen to a little bit more of it. All right. Cheese okay. and onions. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening once again to I Already Told You That. I sure did. Bye.